and welcome to How to Paint a Bulldog, or I should say a Valentine Bulldog with watercolor. So I've already sketched out my little bulldog and put a little heart around him. And the first thing I'm going to do with him is paint in his pupils of his eye. And I'm leaving a little bit of the white of the paper to show in just as the highlight. I'm going to paint the top of his nose, his nostrils, that little line that sort of separates the nose down to the lips. And I'm doing that with, actually I'm doing it with neutral tint mixed with a little bit of burnt umber. Now I'm just making a few little dots because I want the nose to have a little texture to it and I'm going to let those little tiny dots dry. I am using a size zero brush to do that. And now I am going to come in here and take that same dark, almost black mixture. It's brown mixed with a neutral tint, so it's almost black. It's a blackish mixture, a warm black. And outline those eyes of his and start putting in some of those wrinkles around his eyes. And then I'm just going to paint in the actual iris of his eye. And I'm doing that with a little bit of burnt sienna. And I am going right up to the edge, right up to the pupil. And I'm taking a little bit of the burnt umber and just coming and putting in, while it's still wet, just putting in a few shadows around his eyes, inside of his eyes. Now I'm taking a little bit of yellow ochre. I'm wetting his nose roll. That's what you call a bulldog's little wrinkle above his nose, his nose roll. And just dropping in some of that yellow ochre. It's going to be my base color. It's one of the lightest colors that is in his fur, or that's going to be the lightest color in my fur. And I'm just sort of um, painting around, just doing an underpainting basically. Everywhere where he's a brown, I am putting in that yellow ochre. And I'm coming back in, mixing it with just a little bit of a burnt sienna. And going into the wrinkles while it's still a little bit wet. Let me get closer so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm just taking a clean brush, or I should say water, a brush with clean water on it, and blending out those lines and wrinkles so that it looks more natural. It softens it up. We don't want him to have hard wrinkles. We want his wrinkles to look natural and soft as if they're folding over. So we don't want just like a straight crisp line. We want that softened edge to the line. And I am just smoothing some of that out. Now I'm using a number four, and that is a Creative Mark Mimic brush. It is a synthetic type squirrel synthetic deal. And I am coming over to the other side of his face with that same base color, that yellow ochre, and just smoothing it around, getting that base coat on that underpainting, if you will, and coming back with the sienna and starting to paint in some of those wrinkles, those little character lines on Bulldog's face that make them look so sweet. So I'm going to paint those in, darken them up a little bit. I have had, we had three Bulldogs, three English Bulldogs for about 12 years, and then two of them passed away from old age. They were 12. Bulldogs usually only live from eight to ten years. That's their expected lifespan, but ours got up to 12, both of them, and they died within six months of each other. But um, yeah, so we, we got two bonus years is how I look at that. They were really good, sweet dogs. Now we just have one English Bulldog, and she's eight, so I am going to be sad when she finally crosses that rainbow bridge. But back to the painting. What kind of dog do y'all have? Let me know in the comments if y'all have dogs and what kind that you have. I have an English Bulldog and a, a rescue pit bull that I, that I found in the woods. So I've added some more dots to that nose to darken it up and a few shadows. And now I'm coming back to the eyes. I'm just darkening up the irises, adding a little bit more of that brown. I'm coming up there with the yellow ochre and getting the ears, the, under, the underpainting for the ears in. He's really not hard. He, this, this puppy is not hard at all. He's just full of character with all the wrinkles. 
And now I'm just adding a darker brown and sort of outlining and then just taking the wet, clean water, wet brush and smooth that out. And now at the tip of his ear, I just added a little bit of that that dark black, blackish brown mixture that we used for his nose and the pupil of his eye and just put that on the tip of his ear. And then just sort of blending everything out. I'm using a little bit more of that dark mixture to put in some shadows of in his ear. And I'm just darkening up his nostrils a little bit. And now he's got a little like spot, a spot around his nose that's sort of a grayish brown. So I am going to go ahead and paint those little sort of marking spots around his snout, around his muzzle. Just go ahead and paint those in. When, when dogs have white faces, sometimes their skin is pink and sometimes they have those sort of lighter grayish brown markings around their nose. So that's all we're going to do and put in a few little dots for where his whiskers are coming out of his little lips. And now I'm just taking some rose, and I um, believe that is opera rose, actually, and doing a really watery mix right on his tongue and right to the side of his, where his little lips are on the inside of his jowls. And I'm just darkening up some areas up there around his eyes. Now I'm taking this sort of a grayish-brown mixture. I just mixed the, the color that I used for his nose with a little bit of brown. Actually, it was burnt sienna, and made sort of a brownish gray mixture with it and I am outlining his little his little mouth with that putting in the shadows where those are trying to you know make him look realistic now I'm taking some really watery mixture of that gray that neutral tint with a little bit of brown in it put it over the nose and then just picked some of it back up just lifted some of it back up where I wanted the highlights to be and now his nose looks a little more realistic. That sort of blended in all those little dots we had, but you can still see the texture. So that's exactly what we wanted. I'm really pleased with that. Now I'm taking another layer of that really dark brown and just going over his wrinkles and then taking clean water and just blending those wrinkles out, just softening them up, just running that brush right down the sides of those marks, those brush strokes, those really dark brush strokes, just to smooth them and let them sort of blend out and makes it look softer and a little more realistic. And just adding a few more, just adding a few more um, shadow areas one right under his nose rope here he's really cute he's starting to get cute at least one side of his face is starting to get really cute and just adding some more wrinkles soften them up with just clean water still using my number four mimic and it's it's by creative mark that brush it's a it's a size four and now we're going to work on these wrinkles over here, getting those in really nice and dark. So I'm painting the wrinkles first. I'm just following the marks that I've made on my paper when I sketched him on here. And then I'm coming back with just a little bit of clean water on my brush and blending those marks out so that they're not so harsh and crisp. And give it a little bit more of a natural look and a softer look. So now I'm just blending it out, blending it out with my little clean water on my brush and just pulling it around, you know, just softening it up. It looks really good. Now he's now both sides of his face have a little bit of character with their little wrinkles going on. He's so cute. I just love this puppy. He is adorable. But, you know, I'm biased because I love bulldogs anyway. They are the best family pet you could have, but they are expensive on the vet bills, quite expensive. So you always have to take that into consideration. So now I'm just darkening up his nose rope right under there, putting a little shadow on and just sort of smoothing out his nose a little bit more. So he's, he's starting to come to life now. I'm taking some of that rose, and like I said, when you have a dog with a white muzzle, sometimes it's the skin shows through is really pink in some areas, so we're going to get that in there. We're going to get his little pink spots on his muzzle, and we're just doing the under, um, just doing a little bit of the under layer. It's not, it's going to be a little bit darker and probably a little bit more brown, brownish pink when we're finished. 
I'm just taking some gray, adding some shadows around his mouth. And I'm just taking a little darker mixture of that gray, a little more paint, a little less water, and I'm sort of making his smile a little bit more pronounced, brightening up that cute little smile. He, I, he looks like he is just grinning ear to ear, just dying to be your Valentine. So we wanted to just sort of play up the smile, or what I'm, I'm assuming is a smile. And I'm just putting a little more of that pink in his ears. A little bit of that pink is showing in his ears, so we're going to put that in there and let it dry up some before we go to the next thing. Now I've gotten um, some permanent rose and a little bit of brown, and I blended it together to get sort of this, this sort of pinky brown color although it does have more rose than it does brown but um and i'm just doing where it, it would be the darkest and then taking clean water and blending that up toward the roof of his mouth and then just lifting a little bit of it out where i want to highlight at and we got his little tongue in there now while it's still wet i'm dropping a little bit more of that mixture in to some areas where they have shadows, where it's shadowed, but I want to do a wet on wet so that it blends out. And now I'm just going to add the shadow under the top of his lips that are shadowing his tongue back there. And I've added a little bit of blue into that um, rose mixture to get that sort of shadowy color. And we're going to come down on his body some with that um, yellow ochre. And blend that down a little bit where his brown spots are on his body. He has a white chest. So we're not going to bring that brown all the way to the front. And get his little bottom that's back there. We're going to get that in there. And add a few more darker brown shadows. And that sort of br brings his face forward. Of putting those shadows on his body. Because his body is obviously behind his face his head so we want it to be a little bit darker a little a little uh, softer looking so we're doing a lot of water on top of those to really blur it out now i'm adding a little darker shadow beside of his tongue going into his mouth and i'm going to add that sort of pinky brown mixture that i have into his ears and let the highlight be that first layer that i added that first really um, opera rose color. And now I'm adding that pinky brown around his muzzle where it's pink. And then coming back in with some more of that brown gray. And darkening up those spots that he has around his nose and on his muzzle. And just coming in and adding another layer of that brownie rose mixture to his tongue. So that it looks like he has a shadow on it. Taking a little bit of that mixture and adding a little blue and putting that on the very back part of his tongue where it's really inside of his mouth and really a dark shadow is, is over that part of his tongue. And I'll leave a little bit of the light, the color shining through so it looks like his tongue has some highlight on it. Now I'm adding a really dark brownie pink to his lips there. He's got two two parts of his lips are showing where his mouth are open sort of his jowls and I am going to paint those in with a really dark brown I'm going to take some more browns up here and paint inside of his ears around adding a little bit of fur and that's just with that sort of yellow ochre and burnt sienna mixture now I'm going to paint his chest and I'm just going to do sort of a pale gray to be the shadows on his chest. His chest is white, but we're going to go with the pale gray and just blend it out. Now I'm, I've, I've put some clean water on it so it'll blend a little better. Now you can see I'm doing a little wet on wet here. I've gotten that covered with water, clean water, and I'm just adding the, the gray back in so that it'll bleed and look softer. And there we go. We're just going to put that around his chest where his wrinkles are. Put some right above his little nose rope where his forehead starts to go up from his nose. Put a little more dark tips to his ears. Darken those up. Put those shadows that I started a while back and we're going to darken those up. And he is looking very nice. Very cute. 
and just darken his around his eyes where he's got a few little dark marks and I'm just blending out that chest down to the point of his the heart that I have drawn around him and adding some shadows right to his underneath his chin and just being really careful to get some of those shadows in now uh, once again I'm adding another layer to that little smile up there and really bringing that out, really darkening up the, sh the dark parts of his mouth in the back part of his mouth where his tongue is hanging out. And now I'm going to let him dry. Oh, let me just add a little shadow here. Again, that is just that pink, pinky brown with a little blue added. Now I am taking some permanent rose and I'm just going to make some roses. We are going to make a heart of roses all around him and I'm just making little sort of a spiral and then as I go further out away from the center I'm adding a little bit more water to my brush adding a little bit extra color to the center so the center will be darker than the outer part and I'm just going to make all of these some little buds some little rose buds and I'm just going to make a bunch of roses just like this different sizes different shades of pink all around the heart so you see I have that heart outline, so I'm just going to follow that outline as best I can and just, just put roses all the way around his little face. He is a Valentine Bulldog after all. So here, I didn't make you watch me make paint each rose, so here we go. We have skipped ahead to where I've almost finished doing the heart. And you see these are just really um, loose roses. We're not trying to win any realistic awards we're just wanting the essence of a rose and you see I've did different different shades of that pink that some are darker now I'm coming back while they're still wet and a little bit darker color to the centers and let it just sort of blend into that lighter pink and now I'm going to add a few more rose buds I did the first two and then I forgot to add any more as I went around with the roses. So I'm just going to put some little rosebuds all around just to give it a little extra interest. He needs some rosebuds. Now I'm just going to mix up some greens, some yellow greens and some mid-tone greens and a really dark green. So, And then we're just going to add little leaf shapes. Again, we are not trying to win any prizes for realism. We are just wanting the essence of a leaf. We're just going to sort of put them all around the little roses. You can put them in between the roses on top of some of the roses so that they overlap. But you just want to get those leaves in there. And it introduces another color and gives it a little bit more, you know, cred as a rose. Instead of just a lot of little pink swirly cues. And just adding some different tones of green in there. I've got a little darker green now and I'm, I'm putting it in some of the... Uh, flowers that I've already painted I'm not flowers leaves leaves I've already painted so that'll have sort of a variation of green in there putting little buds around my rose buds little sepals little green sepals now you can see what I'm doing I'm just doing little shapes just sort of little leaf shapes and I'm using different colors of green some darker green some yellow green some mid mid-tone green Use whatever greens float your boat as your painting. And I've almost finished with them now, so I'm just going to finish up these little leaves here and there. And you see I'm, I've got a really dark green I'm working on now. You, again, you can put them where they overlap the roses, go right in between the roses. You don't want them to look like little soldiers just all marching around the roses. You want to overlap some of them onto the rose and, and put some in between the rose so that it looks more interesting. I'm getting those little leaves in there. All right. I just can't stop fiddling with it. Look at me. All right, here we go. So now, there, he is looking adorable. Ah, oh, adorable. So I'm gonna just, some of these roses, I am gonna give them a little bit more definition. Some of them I added a little bit too much water when I was painting them, so they sort of faded out into just pink blobs. So I'm just going to take some of the pink and just go back in and add just a few little darker squiggles toward the center, and that'll define them just a little bit better. Yeah, that looks much better. Now I think I'm going to introduce some blue. 
You know how roses always come with baby's breath? Well, my baby's breath is going to be blue, even though I know it is usually always white. I think it is always white. But mine is blue because this is my painting, and I can just paint whatever I want to. So, I mean, blue baby's breath it is. So I'm just going to do a lot of tiny little blue dots. And that just gives it a little more texture, and it also sort of breaks up the monotony of all of the pink and green. So I'm just going to do dots wherever I feel like it. And you should too on your painting. If you try this, just, just do your dots where you want to. Heck, do purple dots if you want. You don't have to do blue. It's your painting. Do yellow ones. Yellow ones would look really pretty or orange ones. I just chose blue because I was in a blue mood. So there we go. But you, you choose what you want. There we go. He is looking, looking very handsome. I'm liking this painting a lot. I think he needs a little shadow under his, over here on his little chin though. He needs a little shadow, a little more definition and one right under his little tongue. And I think he will be better off with a little shadow there. All right, if, thanks for watching. If you love art and enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. See y'all soon.